Well, Mr. President, enough. Give it up. Stand down. Sometimes it is better never than late. And finally, waking up to the mess that is Iraq now and also waking up to the harsh reality that is now. You're too late. Now, that's not me saying that, of course. That's our former top commander in Iraq saying that. General David Petraeus warning that we'd only be getting ourselves in the middle of a sectarian fight. And the airstrikes the Velika government is calling for against Sunni fighters will only make things worse. Petraeus says it's not airstrikes Iraq needs. It's a more inclusive government. And touche for recognizing the need for such a government today, Mr. President. But you're already too late on that and pretty much everything else. Take it from General Petraeus and so many others. In his case, a man who knows the country well and now says it is up to warring factions there to get themselves out of their own hell. Now, we had our chance to make things better, but we botched it. We had our chance to make good on threats, but we didn't do it. And desperate airstrikes, targeted or not now, aren't going to change it. So tonight, tonight, maybe we say the hell with it. You, Mr. President, dragged your feet for so long, did nothing to address the corruption of the Maliki government that has been so obvious. Our American troop presence to nothing so soon that we're done, that this truly is Iraq's problem now. Those are my thoughts. Of course, we're always interested in yours. You can tweet us at hashtag Kavuto throughout the show, and we will share them on this show. But now to the real expert in such matters, the former Deputy Defense Secretary, World Bank President, Paul Wolfowitz. Here in the flesh, I'm usually seeing you by remote, so it's very it's good nice to have you. to be in the flesh. What do you make of what General Petraeus was arguing, kind of what I'm surmising here, that it's too late? Well, it's, we certainly had a lot more options earlier, and it, you know, I think it's Henry Kissinger that's formulated it correctly. If you act early when you have a lot of options, the threat isn't so clear. If you wait until the threat is really clear, your options are decidedly limited. But this is a real threat, and I, b believe me, it's with great hesitation that I disagree with General Petraeus, but I think it's, it's wrong to call this just a sectarian conflict. It is a sectarian conflict, but it has another dimension that it has to be deeply concerning to Americans, and it's not just in Iraq. It's in Syria, it's in Libya, it's in northern Pakistan, it's called Al-Qaeda. Americans may have trouble understanding the difference between Sunni and Shia, but they know what Al-Qaeda is. But even Al-Qaeda doesn't relate to some of these guys, so, so I don't know who's on first. Well, it, there are some differences between them as to how fast they should kill us, excuse me. It's, <laughs> is that really what comes down to? So uh, he's fearing that our getting involved, Paul, will, will only, you know, uh, uh, exacerbate all of this. Uh, you say what? Look, I think there, there are two things that need to be done here, and I think the first thing is immediate thing is to stop this advance by the jihadists. I, abbreviations are probably Greek to most Americans, but these are jihadist people in black flags and black costumes with carrying Al-Qaeda slogans, and yes, they have some differences with the Al-Qaeda leadership in Afghanistan, partly because they behead more people than Al-Qaeda approves of. Give me a break. These people are... Do you find them more brutal than some of the other Potentially, prior? yes. Yeah. And what's also disturbing, and they're based more in Syria than they are in Iraq, is they're recruiting apparently dozens of people out of Europe to send them back, and even some Americans. So they pose a global threat. And the first thing that has to be done, I think, is to stop their advance in Iraq. As to pushing them back further in Iraq, and I would say helping moderate Syrians, and by the way, the moderate Syrians are Sunnis as well. This isn't just purely Sunni Shia. But wouldn't we be saving Maliki in that event? And he's the real reason why we're having the problem. I, I think we, we're not saving Maliki. We're trying to save what's left of Iraq. And with that leverage, I believe, and it's real leverage, in this respect, I think what the president said today is basically correct. Our position has to be for an inclusive government with a very strong implication that Maliki is already disqualified. So if he, he forms a more inclusive government, but he's still at the head of that government. Would you have a problem with that? Uh, it, you know, it depends on how we define <laughs> inclusive. And Always I, they, the diplomat. Always no, no, See, I'm, here's where I come down. Yeah. You're the expert in the regional. But what I've seen is whatever we do now, Paul, would be too little, too late. And whatever we do, I think, would, would just delay the inevitable, much as like uh, any attempt at, at, at a, a, a rush of soldiers in Vietnam to stave off what was the collapse w w wouldn't help We're now. We're not dealing what do you with the North Vietnamese army. I mean, it, Vietnam was, was a massive invasion by one of the hardest, best trained armies in the world. This is not an impressive force, and what's really so disappointing it is... It must be impressive because... Well, the Iraqi they, army collapsed in front yeah. of it. But think about this, Neil. 
you're in the Iraqi army, you know that if these sons, excuse me, if, if these guys capture you, you're going to be beheaded. What do you do? I mean, if it, panic sets in fairly quickly, but look, things can you, get worse. Any chance they take Baghdad? The that, way you see it? that would be terrible, wouldn't it? In so, other words, if we did not get ourselves involved right now, they would take Baghdad. I'm not sure, but oh, you really? could have a real bloodbath in Baghdad. I don't think we want that. I think. What about these 275 soldiers we're sending to Baghdad to guard our embassy? Well, I, there better be a good evacuation plan. But most of all, look, I don't think it's wrong to try to stop this advance. I do think it's wrong to become, as I think General Petraeus has phrased, the air force for the Shia sectarians. But we have some real discretion over how our help is used. And let, let's remember, because we get so focused on Iraq, in many ways, this problem began in Syria. It is the product of right, three right, years right. of American neglect in Syria. Do you think that line in the sand that we didn't really stick to is why we're in the deep cover? That line, the earlier line that Assad must go, and just generally speaking, the unwillingness to equip the moderate Sunnis. Remember, the fight in Syria is Sunni moderates versus Sunni extremists. But I don't think, well, that this president has the stomach for any of this. He's just looking to get out. And he's reading the American war weariness as a good reason to get out. I think he's contributing the American war weariness. Interesting. Uh, I, look, that's, again, I may, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not good at reading grassroots opinion, which is what's really critical here. But I think if you talk to people in upstate New York where I grew up and you talk about Shia and Sunni, their eyes glaze over. Yeah. If you talk about Al-Qaeda, they immediately understand that these are the people who hit us on 9-11 and they will take quite seriously the possibility that more of these people are being So you don't take it thing. as inevitable that even we get involved, we're just staving off the inevitable. That, that, that uh, I had a guest here who was saying, you know, they're going to disintegrate into a, uh, a three-part country. It's civil war. You know, one group controlling the north, another the south. And in other words, that it's not the same Iraq, and that it's such a divided country. Uh, it's it's not as if we have to worry about a nuclear uh, center of activity aimed at the United States. But Neil, not all Sunnis are Al Qaeda. In fact, I don't think most of them are. The Kurds, who have effectively maybe not separated, they've created an enormously effective autonomous region in the north. They can be our allies against these killers. There are. There are a lot of reasonable Shia. Maliki isn't the only Shia we can work with. So and your involvement poll would be what? When you say that we should not give up and that we not do what Petraeus is saying, what do we do? I think we should make it clear that we are ready to support anyone who is serious about fighting Al-Qaeda. And that one of the tests of seriousness, obviously, is that you stand and fight. But a second test of seriousness is that you are inclusive in bringing in all the other people that can fight Al-Qaeda. But how do you know a moderate element within a crazy group? I mean, it was like after Egypt fell, right? I mean, we didn't know who our friends were, who was less crazy. Well, I think, look, there are tests. And I oh, think really? I, Petraeus himself is living proof that he was able to discern. He called them reconcilables, Sunnis who could work with us and Sunnis who couldn't work with us. And Don't that, behead people. That would be one yeah. criteria I'd start with, and there are a few others. Gotcha. Uh, but we're not asking for them to be Jeffersonian Democrats. We're asking them to be by Middle Eastern standards, let's call it that, reasonably decent and willing to fight the enemy. And there is an enemy, and it's a very dangerous enemy, and it has been very vocal about its desire to kill Americans. And that's what we should be most concerned about. Paul Wolfowitz, thank you very much. Former Deputy Secretary of Defense knows this region better than anyone I know. When we come back,